Praise God. Praise God. I pray that you're having a blessed night. It is 1059 Eastern Standard Time. Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I hope that you have had a blessed day. This is the first day of 2020. Come on, somebody. Give him glory. Give him honor. I pray that you have a prosperous year. But hold on. Not just as you prosper in life, but as your soul prospers first, said the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Um, this is a subject that God is going to help me on all year long. I'm going to say this again. I'll be preaching this all year long until we get it in our spirit. God says the church must start casting out the demons that are in people. And I'm going to tell you the five powerful steps on how to cast out demons. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because that's what we're fighting against. We're not fighting against all this other stuff. I'm telling you, it's just a surname. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So we're going to go here. And actually, you know what else I want to do? Um, Hold on just one moment, you guys. I want to do something. Um, um, when Jesus cast out the demon, hold on. So I'm going to give you some, um, pointers on what to do, how to do it the right way. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Alrighty, okay. I just want to get make sure I have all my ducks in a row before I start because I'm a flow. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Because this stuff is real. It's real. It's real, y'all. Hallelujah. All right, praise God. Hallelujah. So I want to talk about when Jesus cast out demons. So let's go here first. All right, let's go here first. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, so basically, when Jesus cast out the demons, all right, um, and then I'm going to take y'all step by step. It was in Matthew chapter 8. And what did he say? He said, um, oh, Lord, here we go with this Happy New Year stuff. If you scan chapter 8, it goes to where um, the prophecy and the section. And when he says, well, who are you? And what did he say? They say, we are legions. And notice he asked the name. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And they didn't want to get cast out. Now, let me tell you. Let me go back to this. The reason why they didn't want to get cast out because... They were principalities. I'm going to take my time with this because I really need to teach this. It's going to be a very powerful one that you're going to need to go back and listen to. I'm telling you, I feel the power of God. In every territory over this whole world, there are principalities. That's why in Ephesians 6, it says um, wickedness in high places. Every region has a principality. Uh, I'm going to go here. I'm not bashing any one um, clan, a group of people, but I got to go here in Atlanta. Everybody knows homosexuality. That's that principality. Um, also in San Diego, in Chicago, what's the principality? That's the murder in principality. Um, y'all understand witchcraft. Most people think about Louisiana, although witchcraft is all over. Come on, somebody. So there's areas where they're known for such things. Florida. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I'm going about the principalities. So in every region, there's a principality. So that means that they are territorial demons. So we're not just working with little demons. We're working with territorial demons. And here's the deal. They want everybody in that territory to conform to that territorial demon. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me go ahead and break this thing down. All right. So God was saying, he said, so let me go ahead and tell you how it's happening. First of all, they're using emotional witchcraft. What is emotional witchcraft? They play on your emotions. Y'all notice all these reality shows, everybody, everybody getting on, um, on YouTube now, I mean, people start crying, crocodile tears. You know what I'm saying? It is called, it's psychology, but it's actually chemical and psychology warfare, but it's demonic. So let me go ahead and do this thing. All right. First of all, we're going to go here. We're going to go here. God says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. So let me go ahead and walk this thing out. I pray that you have a pencil paper or if not, just you're going to come back to this. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you about the steps in casting out demons. I'm, I'm just going to hit it. All right. The first thing is you got to live holy. You cannot cast out a demon if you are not righteous. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. They're going to laugh at you. <laughs> That's what they did to the sons of Sceva. Hold on. In Acts. 
the sons of Sceva. Um, Acts 19, 11 through 20. And God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick and their diseases left them and the evil spirits, notice that, came out of them. Then some of the ignorant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, I drew you by Jesus whom Paul proclaims. They couldn't even proclaim it because they wasn't a real believer. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this, but the evil spirit answered them and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know it says, but this says recognize, but who are you? <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them and mastered all and of them and overpowered them. So you can't just do this. Are you going to be like the sons of Sceva? You're going to have to have some power. So the first one is you must live a holy life that, and that's why they're trying to tame us, yo. They know that if they can get us to watch pornos or drink or lie or have sex, you will not be powerful to cast out that demon. They know what they're doing. That's what Hollywood been doing. That's what the elite been doing. Let's take the people of God so they will not be powerful so that they can stop and help. They won't be able to help their own brothers and sisters. Y'all don't understand why the church don't have no power. Come on, somebody. Have you touched the unclean thing, said the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. All right, so let's go again. Number two, it says, Know your authority. You have to know your authority. Let's go to it. Luke 10, 19. I meditate on this scripture every, all the time. Every chance I get. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing should by any means hurt you. Oh, he didn't say you weren't going to go through nothing, but it's just not going to overtake you. Come on, somebody. So the second thing is you got to know your authority. Most people have lost their authority the way Samson did. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The enemy, will, that's, why he, that's why he sends temptation. Because he knows that if you're a powerful man and woman of God, let me tell you something. Everybody that was powerful that fell, Satan, Satan tempted them. Oh, I, I know what their weakness is. And he sent it. And they did not overcome. And therefore they fell. It's not that they wasn't powerful men and women of God. They succumbed to the temptation, my brothers and sisters. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Number three, you must live a life of praying and fasting. You can't do this without praying and fasting. I'm telling you right now, it will not be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How you going to go against a demon and God is not with you? And the only way God is being with you is if you have a relationship. I just said something. You can't go to church on Sunday and think that that's good. You, you got to have a relationship. You got to do this for real. 24, 7, honey, 365 days a year. Or guess what? Them demons going to overtake you. And I rebuke it, but it's just reality. We don't like that to touch us, but that's real. Some of you, and I don't mean no harm, but I'm going all the way. It's 2020, and I'm bringing plenty. Point blank in the story. Let me tell you something. Y'all like to play church, meaning that Sunday, hallelujah, singing in the choir. Y'all doing all kind of stuff. But from Monday through Saturday, <laughs> you know what you do. You ain't got them demons laughing at you talking about, yeah, they ain't got no power. You got to do this for real. And how do you get to this point? This is a process. This something. It's just like on a job or any kind of hobby. You got to practice till you master that thing. Hallelujah. You got to master it. God give me the power. But God, but God going to tell you, wait a minute, have you been in your word? Have you been fasting? Have you been praying? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Have you been listening? Because after you pray, you're supposed to listen for instructions. Confirmation. Y'all going to everybody else. That's why people taking y'all money now. That's why y'all mad at some church folk because they fooled you. Because you didn't have enough God to understand and, and hold on. There's not a lot of you that have wisdom and discernment because if you did, you wouldn't be in some of the stuff you're in. You have to wait for God. I don't move unless I hear confirmation. And we're not talking about no one time. I'll ask God two or three times. And now that I didn't hear him, I want to know for sure. I, I don't have time to put going around in circles. I just said something. Hallelujah. All right. So number four, you got to tell the demon. Notice what I said. You got to tell the demon, tell me your name. That's what Jesus did. He said, tell me your name. He didn't ask him. He didn't ask him. He said, what is your name? Now, he did kind of say it like that, but he still has the authority. So even if you say tell or what, they still have to tell you because you have the authority. I never forget when I first ran into a warlock was in California. It was about 2010 and he had came in a church 
And here's what I did. You intercessors, this is how you're supposed to do it. God used to make me go two hours before church. And we had, hold on, we had a two-story church. I was, I ain't gonna lie, I used to get so mad at God sometimes because it took me an hour and a half. He said, I want you to touch every chair. Let me tell you why he told me to do that. Because I was the gatekeeper. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. That means everything that entered that church. Oh, hallelujah. I remember I was praying that day. And I sat down and my eyes opened. I say, something's wrong. That warlock walked in that church. I walked up to that warlock. That warlock bowed down his head. Yes, he did. He couldn't even look at me. So I told him straight up. I said, you touch my pastor and I'm going to tear you up in the spirit. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And I'm going to go ahead and tell this story. I ain't going to say the church. I warned everybody. I said, that's a warlock. That's a warlock. And I know it was, what, 28, 29. So people ain't really thinking like that, right? They're thinking, I'm crazy. Man, I tried. I told pastor. I told people. They rebuked me. In three months, that man was pastor's assistant. In four months, that man had caused so much stuff in that church. In five months, I told pastor, I said, don't take no money from him, man. That man was a million. I said, don't take no money. Nobody listened to me. Y'all already know what happened. That warlock, he wreaked havoc. And one day he laughed at me. It got so bad, I want to fight him, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I want to fight him like in a physical form. Because he used to look at me and laugh like everybody, nobody know but you, huh? And he would laugh at me. And I would cry on the inside. But they all found out, but it was a little too late. He had destroyed some stuff, man. So before you just call somebody crazy or even a witch, <laughs> y'all don't hear me. Because y'all don't know the power of God. So y'all be thinking people witches when really... They are women and men of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's the truth. Some of you don't know a witch from a real man and woman of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, that hurt me because they didn't listen to me. But they did recover years later. Notice what I said. So I'm going to go back and say it again. There's five steps. I'm going to give you the fifth one right now. After casting out a demon, you have to go straight to God and, and lay on that threshing floor. You should not go around nobody because you don't want that to jump on nobody else, especially if they cannot handle it. I'm telling you, them things to jump. You got to go lay before God and stay in your house that night straight up and take a, a I call it a spiritual bath. OK, I, 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 I just use some Epsom salt, some um, green alcohol. And I anoint myself from the head to the toe after I do a deliverance service. And I ask God, I say, God, take anything that's off of me that's not of you. I ask, I, um, restore me, revive me, refresh me, reanoint me. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah. That's what the threshing floor is supposed to do. That's why the most powerful position of prayer is prostate. Supposed to lay on that floor before God, man. That's the only one who can heal you. That's the only one who can take everything from you. So the five steps to casting out a demon is number one, you must live holy, and that's why and, and that's why they try to attain us. Number two, you must know your authority. Luke 10 19. Number three, you must live a life of praying and fasting. Number four, you must tell or ask the demon their name. Period. Number five, after casting out demon, you must stay to yourself. Don't go around people and ask God to um, remove anything that may have been attached. I sever it to the root of that thing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm telling you, the church got to go back to casting out demons. We got too many demons in the church. And I'm going to be honest with you. I want to ask you a question. How is it that demons are comfortable in your church? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It, 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 and, and hold on. I'm asking God if I could say this. I am going to say it. Uh, a prophet went to a certain pastor. And I know this firsthand. This is not nothing I heard. This is something I witnessed. The pastor told him, you got two witches in your church. No, I'm sorry. The, the prophet told the pastor, you got two witches in your church. The pastor told him, they're not connected to me. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> I... I, I didn't know what to say because I never heard an answer like that. What you mean that I connected to you? How could witches sit in your church comfortably? Let me tell y'all something. It's a problem we have in the church right now. How is it that they can sit comfortably in your church, pastor, preacher, teacher, evangelist, apostle? If demons can sit in your church and do what they doing, that means your anointing is tainted. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody talking about y'all. It's just time for y'all to stop fronting. Because half of y'all don't have no anointing and the other half mad at the ones that do. Yeah, I said what I said, how I said it. Because here's the deal. Y'all thought that God was using all these mega churches. Now y'all see it's just a sham. Now it's the nobodies at the end that y'all look at. Y'all ain't ready for me, huh? Hallelujah. This stuff real. This stuff real. 
Hallelujah. And also, you got to be accountable. You can't go where God don't tell you to go. You can't do what God don't tell you to do. Too many people straddling the fence in this hour, said the Lord. But in 2020, I'm telling you, some things are coming. And we're going to know who everybody is, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. Y'all stop playing with God. Stop playing with God and stop playing with God's people. If you're going to be a heathen, go ahead and be the best heathen that you can. Get it all out your system before you come playing with God. Because some of y'all go to the altar every time you get a chance and then you start crying and you go back and do the same thing. You know what repent means? Because the other lady didn't get it right. You know what repent means? God, I repent and I, I won't do it again. That's what repent means. It don't mean, God, I, I'm not going to do it today. The devil is a lie and so are you. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Hallelujah. God is a good God, but God don't play. Hallelujah. So, and, and I also did this video for a lady that asked me how to cast out demons as well. So here you go, ma'am, because it's time for y'all to start. But remember, let me do that disclaimer again. <laughs> if you know you are not holy and you ain't got no power, don't go messing with them demons. They're going to whip you like the seven sons of Sceva. Don't say I didn't tell you. It's because a lot of people perpetrating. They don't have no power for real. Why do you think people are not laying hands the way they should? If you taint it, you don't have the power through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is holy. And y'all don't understand these three things. Holy God, Holy Spirit, and Holy Word. That's the Holy Word of God. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. And this is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll out soldiers for that is who we are. God bless.